Leach, when Wigner wrote his famous paper on the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics, he was primarily looking at um, at physics and and uh, the um, particle physics and the development of quantum mechanics in, in the uh, early and mid parts of the 20th century. Now that cosmology, of which you've been an important part of, has developed precision cosmology, um, do you find this concept of the unreasonable effect of, the, of mathematics now even true at a larger scale? Uh, it is. It is. So, but uh, to me, I would go back to well before Wigner, I, go, I will go back to my countryman um, Galileo Galilei, who said that the big book of nature is yeah. written in the mathematical language. Right. So to me, uh, mathematics is a language that uh, allows us to describe the physical universe and to talk about the physical universe. Not everything, just the physical universe. So it's some unreasonable success, but it's reasonable because we applied only what it works on the <laughs> physical universe. The physical universe, we believe it's uh, coherent, there is a cause and effect, that it's logical, it's self-consistent. If you repeat the same experiment under exactly the same condition, you're going to get the same result, which is what mathematics is. It, it is, but mathematics is more than that too. You could have all of what you just said and it still not have the mathematical um, um, uh, simplicity that, that we see with mathematics. I mean, so you have, whether it's the inverse square law of gravity or Einstein's theory of gravity, these are, these are fairly um, um, uh, short, concise, pithy statements yes. that work. And they, no reason it has to be that way. It could have been, and if you look at the orbits of planets, or you look at the yes. the, just the uh, you know square root of minus two or a pi. I mean, the, 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 it, it, it's not a simple that's... equation like these these others are. So it's so mathematics is one step further yes. than everything you said. That is true, and it will go, I think, even one step further in the sense that mathematics, the language of mathematics, is not ambiguous. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about the human language, the human language is built to be ambiguous. When we read a poem, the beautiful poem is a poem that speaks differently right. to each of the readers. Right. While when we use mathematics, it better speaks exactly the same right. to everybody on earth that knows mathematics. Right. Otherwise, it would be and, beyond earth. and beyond earth. <laughs> Except with one exception, except when mathematics becomes ambiguous, then it's telling you something. So let's think in terms of probability. No. Then mathematics become ambiguous because it says it could be this or that, just with a different probability, but it's telling you something real yeah, so yeah, about right. probability. And you're so learning, when it yeah. becomes ambiguous, it's ambiguous yeah. for some very good reason. Right, right, right. And this I find it's an even more unreasonable success of mathematics. Well, in terms of the unreasonable success or effectiveness, uh, I think we've talked about the success and the effectiveness, but let's reflect on unreasonable. Okay. Why is it unreasonable? Why isn't it reasonable? It's very reasonable <laughs> in the sense that it's rational. Yes. It is uh, unreasonable because uh, sometimes in the history of mathematics you find that there were some uh, mathematics that was developed and was not really applied to describe the real world un until somebody was banging their heads against a difficult <laughs> problem and found that this mathematics that somebody else developed was exactly what they needed. Mm -hmm. the typical example is differential geometry and general relativity. Yeah, that's, that's, a classic. that's one wonderful example. And so this may make you think that maybe there are aspects of the physical world that we are not really able to describe in a simple and consistent way, just because we don't have yet the mathematics to do that. Mm -hmm. Then maybe mm -hmm. one day somebody come up with the right mathematics and bang, mm -hmm. we can do it instead mm -hmm. of Mm. You know, messing around with computers, uh, <laughs> approximations. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, people are striving that, like, like to try to find a unity between general relativity and quantum mechanics. Yes. And people are using, whether it's string theory or other, mm, quantum loop gravity, or the, yes. everybody 
struggling. Uh, or highly and, nonlinear processes that yeah. need to be simulated because with mathematics you only get so far and after that you just mm. have to give it to a big computer and just mm. simulate. Yeah. Yes? And, and so that's one of the fundamental questions is w what are the problems that are that lend themselves to the fundamental regularity that mathematics can have and, and, and which are the problems that are um, kind of contingent uh, ways the world is but didn't have to be, like the orbits of planets or the distance from stars. I mean, those, there's n the orbits of planets don't have to have some, you know, platonic perfect sphere, mm -hmm. you know, cycles within cycles to do that. They are just coincidences of, of gravity working and pulling in different ways. And so th those are two different ways. And, and, and some things we know and some things we don't know. So the, the question is, which of the, are the, of the unsolved problems in, in physics and cosmology are such that they will ultimately lend themselves to a fundamental explanation that something could not have been otherwise and therefore almost certainly be describable in mathematical terms and, gen, and, and, and probably a simple term, maybe a different kind of mathematics, or those kinds of problems which ultimately are not the case, that they are total contingencies, just, just the way things are in our universe at this time, or our solar system, like the orbits of, mm -hmm. of planets, with, with no fundamental um, reason behind them. And the question is, of the various problems, which are which? In some sense, I wonder if maybe these two questions or two aspects are the same thing. Because we know that all physical law, um, as far as we have seen in the development of physics, they were to some extent effective theory. Like Newton theory is an effective theory yeah. that then if you push it beyond the regime where it's supposed to work, it needs some modification. So maybe this regularity and this match that we find, it's because all the theory we have are effective theory that mm. describe what we see and they look simple and they look beautiful to us but at the end of the day they are effective and if, and they live in a bigger one which is probably look a little bit more complicated <laughs> <laughs> but it's more powerful and so on and so forth so maybe they are not two different views maybe it's the same just different aspect of the same question